Fam, this is Brother Hot Tim. Mr. Cleave over there. I'm coming from the future. No. You know, this time traveling shit is very confusing, right? Well, anyway, there's going to be a part three to the lymphatic system because there's some other information I think that is very important. So, I'm glad you're bearing with me for this extended period of time and get ready for the show. Just took my supplements. I hope you're taking yours. We drunk a water. We already did the toast. So I'm coming back to let you know that it's going to be a part three. Peace. And by the way, great Koozie Chagali. Alright Peach fam, I want to once again welcome you to this daily toast. Today is Kooji Chagalia, alright? And we are going to toast the creator, our ancestors, this day, our children. And then we're going to get into what we're going to talk about today on YouTube. Um, the uh, lymphatic system, right? We're going to finish talking about the lymphatic system and how to help it. Some foods that you could possibly eat to help with that. You know what I'm saying? Some some good information. You know, I did the little research. That means you got to go a little bit deeper with your research. All right? You know what I'm saying? Don't stop with, with, what I, with, with what I found. You need to find your own stuff because the information is out there. And some of the information I might be reading from might not be correct. I'm not a doctor or nothing like that. So... But it's good for us to study together. All right, so we're going to do the Daily Toast. So we got to uh, bring them out, right? Um, shouts out to Ms. Sheila. I see you up. I see Sister Tara Hassa up. Sending shots out. Make sure y'all like and share. Let's get some more people up here toasting with us. Now, first things first, make sure we starting our day off with water, right? Get that water into your system. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. All right. So here we go. Oh, you know I'm up to my 32 ounces. Come on now. So Sheila, pull out your water. Get your water. Let's get this water. Let's get hydrated. Text a friend. If you love them, text them and say, stay hydrated. Right? Stay hydrated. You sleepy, drink a little bit of water. Man, this glass is a lot bigger than the last one, fam. My God. Two glasses and... It's water, man. I like my distilled water. I got to go back and get some distilled water. But y'all know when I got distilled water in the house, you know I'm about to brew. And speaking of brew, do I got something to share with y'all this morning? Woo! Man, I'm trying to tell y'all, when y'all get this water in the morning, man, 
good God Almighty. That's from last night. That's food from last night. Man. Water, first thing in the morning, once again, helps jump start your system, right? It helps your body start detoxifying. So for those of you that's looking for healthy things, right? One of the best things you can do is water. If you can't take the supplements that y'all see me taking, drink you some water, breathe you some air properly. Stop being a mouth breather. Stop breathing through your mouth, right? That's part of the Guzasaba Challenge. Don't breathe through your mouth for 30 days. You know what I'm saying? For, for that 21 day, that whole 21 day period. A lot of us are acting in the way we acted because we're not breathing right. You know, of course the food is not right. Of course the water, if you drink a sink water, is not right. But then, you're not breathing right. So damn, you, you're doing a trifecta of fuckery. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I just want to show you this. This is what happens when your spouse take time off, right? Have a couple of days off. This is what happens to the ambrosia around this mug. Y'all seen it on Sunday, right? My wife took 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 some days off and the ambrosia gone. But that ain't the one we gonna do. I just wanted to show y'all, man. I'm practicing what I'm preaching around here. Not only am I drinking it. Shit, we drinking this as a family. Now, but today, oh. <laughs> oh, look, there you go. Yeah. My black folks like that red Kool-Aid, right? This is that cherry ambrosia. It's been sitting for the prescribed three days to kind of settle it down. I still see that is is breathing. So now, part of the process with this fermentation is right. So when I first start brewing the ambrosia, just to make sure y'all can see it on Facebook. When I first start brewing the ambrosia, it's an aerobic breathing type, and the fermentation takes place when it's when it's aerobic, right? So it's like air. It has air. Now what's going on right now is an anaerobic process because I got all the air blocked out with the airlock and it's only allowed to, it got, whatever air it got in here is doing everything internally. So all this stuff is eating up itself internally. So now the uh, bacteria yeast are getting stronger. So now what I'm going to do, we're going to sample just one glass of this cherry. Ambrosia. Now let me make sure y'all can see the glass. You know I got to use my my favorite see-through glass. Ah, oh, you can hear it. You can hear it. Not as quite as red as I would thought. It's more of a brown. This is a tart cherry. Because I heard the benefits and benefits of tart cherry, and we'll talk about that in the future. But it looked good. It smelled good. Put the top back on. Move it out the way. We'll do our toast. I just wanted y'all to see it. So, I can't do that. I can't do that. <sighs> All right, let's toast these ancestors. Let's bring them. If you got ancestors you want me to salute, please. Put the names up on the screen for YouTube, for you um um for Facebook I mean, but for YouTube, 
post them in the comments. I get them because I read all the comments. All right. First, saluting the ancestor. I mean, saluting the creator by whatever name you choose to call it. Creator, we call on that energy. We call it into our lives. We remind ourselves that it is always present, and we energize ourselves with the presence of our with our creator right now. We toast that creator and we say, "Ashe." From there, we move to our personal ancestors. Our ancestor came to me um, yesterday. Well, actually, in a conversation, and. Um, uh, brother reminded me that um, in our conversation about this answer, so I want to send out um, a toast to Brother Mark Welsh, um, um, the sweat leader for uh, the Columbus Native American Center. Um, brother allowed me to come and sweat with him and his family, and um, we all became relations. You know what I'm saying? I told him, I said, my community needs to sweat. And um, I gave him the, the package of tobacco. He accepted the gift and said, y'all come and sweat whenever you want, brother. You know what I'm saying? And, and they, his, him and his family opened up their home to us. And um, it was a beautiful thing. And we've been sweating there for years. And Mark passed away, so I want to salute Brother Mark Welsh as, as one of our ancestors. So... You call your ancestors at this moment, call that energy into the room, call that energy into your life to knock down the barriers that may be holding you back, to lift you up when you feel down. We toast those ancestors that remembered us when we didn't remember ourselves, who knew us when we didn't know ourselves, who didn't doubt us when we doubted ourselves, who pushed us when we wanted to sit down, who lifted us up when we needed to be lifted up. We toast those ancestors and we thank them for their very presence. We thank them for, for, for allowing us to choose them in this life, right? So we toast them. I call on the Miles Brown, Ms. Ann, Robert and Texas, Evan Davis, Herman Brown Sr., Rosalie Tilly, George and William Walton, Fanny, um, Fanny Gatson, Alina, Uncle Chris, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Margaret Ellis, Cecil Ellis, Wash Ellis, um, Monte, oh, my Aunt Alvaro, my Aunt, my Aunt Gina, um, Montague Pittman now, Jamon Jones, John Fillard, um, I, um, Jeremiah Tappan, Normal X, Don, um, Elder Donaldson, Elder Harrison, um, uh, Dr. Mary Ann Williams, Pastor Yusef Weston, and any others that people may want me to salute, I say I say. From there we move to this present moment. We are in Kujichagalia. This is the day of self-determination, the day of justice. This is the day of correspondence. This is my day, day of Kwabana. I am Kwabana. Uh, day of Alpha, female name Abana. All those born on Tuesday, I salute all of you. This is our moment. This is our time to shine. Rise up. You know what I'm saying? Time to make a change in the world. We say, I say. <clears throat> Now, we move to our children, our children's children, onto infinity. Remember that everything we say and do um, benefits or take away from the blessings of our children. So let's be wise in what we say and let's be wise in the actions that we take. And we say, I say, last but not least, this toast is for each and every last one of you that might be watching this later. May the blessings of the ancestors flow into your life. May any roads that are rough be made easy for you. You know what I'm saying? Not too easy. Because struggle makes us better, y'all. Right? We don't want our ancestors to knock down some of the things that we might need to make us better people. Alright? So we toast them and we say, I say, I say, I say, I wish y'all peace, power, Enjoy. Now let's sample.
Hey, I think I'm starting to feel like the Lord of the Rings. Shit. Oh my God. Y'all can't have none of my precious. My precious. Oh my God. This cherry. Oh my God. Uh. Mm. I don't think I'm going to sell this one. Mm -mm. Mm. Uh. I can't. Uh. Listen. So we're going to look at the health benefits of tart cherry. But this is the truth. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. And it got a cake. Mm. I would slam down the damn glass, but I know it would break. Woo! Man. I gotta go put that back in the box, so I'm I'm not gonna be able to bottle that. Oh my god. Alright, so um I wanna thank everybody on Facebook. Who's checking us out live? Shouts out to Miss Sheila. Shouts out to um, Tara Hassa. Um, and I'm going to move to the YouTube version so that um, we can finish discussing the lymphatic system. Those of you on Facebook, y'all need to check out the um, little information on the lymphatic system. Even if you're not watching the show, read up on the lymphatic system because. Um, it's very important in fighting some of the diseases that's going on in our community, right? And you have to help the lymphatic system. It's not like the blood system, all right? So um, we're going to get into taking our supplements, and then we're going to finish off the project. So I want to say peace to those on Facebook. Y'all have a great day. Ooh. Ooh. Alright YouTube, it's just us now, it's just us, so those that's concerned, I, I got some more coconut oil, I, now I'm able to get back into the oil that I got the palm oil, gonna take that, we need those beta carotenes, I'm finding out how, how healthy those are. Last but not least, we are almost to the bottom of the black seed oil. We'll talk about that. All right? So, let's get right into it. Of course, today, y'all know today is Kuchi Aklia, self-determination, justice, correspondence, male day, Kwabana, female, Abana. All right? That's the names for the day. Um, I want to send shots out um, to... Uh, Sister Agape Jenna, um, Jasmine Agape Pennywell She reached out to me She wants her own Scoby and she's here um, Okay cool So she wants some information About how to get a Scoby I'm going to help her out So let me get that off the screen well, how do I get that off the screen? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. All types of stuff is popping up on me, family. I might have to go on and... What is... What in the world? Alright, cool. Got it off the screen. Alright, so now, I'm back. Y'all ready? Let's finish the lymphatic system. How the lymphatic system works. Now, um, I put a picture up yesterday. I'll put the picture up again. Now, I want to stress, ladies, please, please pay attention to this. Because a lot of the cancers, especially the breast cancer, because there's a lot of lymph nodes 
I think they call them lymph nodes in the breast area, especially for y'all. And if we, if you're not getting the lymph fluid moving, it becomes hard. We know what happens when the liquid sits still too long, right? You know what I'm saying? It's not a good thing. All right. Here's how the lymphatic system works to protect us from becoming sick. We come into contact with various types of microbes, bacteria, and toxins every day that enter our bodies and make their way into the lymphatic fluid. Eventually, the fluid containing these organisms can get trapped inside lymph nodes, which is where the immune system attacks. Any perceived threats by attempting to destroy them with white blood cells. Inside the lymph nodes, which look like small bean-shaped structures, bacteria are filtered out and white blood cells are produced, used up as part of our defer defensive mechanism and then replenished. Another important role of the lymphatic system is keeping bodily fluids balanced. When the lymphatic system works properly, we don't experience any painful swelling or abnormal water retention. Our blood vessels and lymphatic vessels seep fluid into and out of the surrounding tissue so that fluid so that the fluid can be drained. Extra fluid is eliminated from the body, which stops tissue from swelling or puffing up. However, when we are sick, when we when we are uh, sick or injured, fluid builds up in a damaged area which is why throbbing and pain occurs. You probably experienced swollen lymph nodes at some point when you've been sick, especially ones located near the throat, the genitals, um, that can be triggered by common infection, urinary tract infection, strep throat, colds, or sore throats. We all have experienced those. Lymph nodes are found around the body, some of the most prominent locations being the throat, groin, throat, groin, y'all know where that at, right? armpits, alright, we're going to talk, because look, it's important that y'all pay attention to this chest, abdomen, lymph nodes are located close to major arteries since the lymphatic system connects to the blood flow to keep the blood clean. Within the lymph nodes is where the immune cells are created, which are critical for fighting infection and healing wounds. The lymph nodes are able to detect when harmful organisms have made their way into the body, which prompts them to make more infection-fighting infection white blood cells called lymphocytes. Did y'all know white blood cells was called lymphocytes? Because I sure didn't. Learning something new every day. Lymph fluid also makes its way through the spleen and thymus in, additions, in addition to lymph nodes before emptying into the bloodstream. The spleen is another filtering organ that is located inside the abdomen under the diaphragm. Remember we use the diaphragm for breathing? Helps pull the air all the way down into our lungs. Alright. Um, it has the important role within the immune system of removing dangerous microbes, balancing fluids, and destroying old or damaged red blood cells. So this is where the... Um, the old blood cells go to die um, in the spleen. Once the, once the most important job of the spleen is producing macrophages or B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, type of white blood cells that are triggered when blood passes through the spleen and harmful substances are detected. These engulf and destroy bacteria, remove dead cells lingering in the blood, and eliminate foreign matter from the body. The thymus is located under the rib cage. This is the rib cage, Philly. You know, get to know your body. It has the same sort of job filtering blood and creating or removing white blood cells, diseases that damage the lymphatic system. When a lymphatic system becomes overly stressed, symptoms and signs can include chronic fatigue, swelling in lymph nodes, throat, armpits, groin muscle aches and pains, joint pains, sore throats and getting colds more often, frequent infection or viruses, fibromyalgia symptoms, arthritis, and even cancer formation. So damn, this lymphatic system, oh, family, family. I mean, come on now. 
The body protects us from infections and illness by trapping microbes found in our tissues, mostly bacteria we pick up from the environment and send them to the lymph nodes where they become trapped. This keeps the bacteria from spreading and causing further problems like viruses. Once the bacteria are trapped, lymphocytes attack and kill the bacteria. So the lymphocyte area is where our body does battle, right? Diseases that damage the lymphatic system. When the lymphatic system becomes overly stressed, symptoms and signs include cancer formation, chronic fatigue. So we just talked about that. And they got a little picture on there. So I hold it up for y'all. You can get this article that I'm reading. Um, I think this might be Dr. Ashe's, Dr. Axe. I keep saying Ashe, but disease that impact the lymphatic system. Um, lymphomas, a type of cancer that starts in the lymph nodes when lymphocytes undergo change and then multiply and, and form tumors. Hodgkin's disease, cancer of the lymphatic system, oedema, aka edema, water retention and swelling caused by trapped fluid within the tissues, tonsillitis, infection of the tonsils in the throat, lymph, lymph, lymphadenopathy, the lymph nodes become swollen and enlarged due to infection, lymphatic dentitis, Inflammation of the lymph nodes caused by an infection of the tissue. Um, splema megalia, an enlarged spleen to, to, due to a viral infection. Now I'm reading from Dr. App. Lymph nodes um, swell if you have an infection or virus, even if cancer cells are detected, because lymphocytes production increases. This is essentially how inflammation occurs. Sometimes it's noticeable when a lymph node is inflamed, such as a glandular fever, which is an illness where lymph nodes become tender, other diseases that impact the lymphatic system. We already discussed, we discussed the system. Um, lymphatic system and cancer development. All right. Lymphatic system is crucial to protecting us from cancer formation. When cancer cell breaks away from a tumor, they can get trapped inside of a nearby lymph node, which is why swollen lymph nodes are a potential sign that a cancerous tumor could be lurking, although this isn't always the case. Many times doctors will check the lymph nodes for swelling and abnormalities when they test a patient for cancer or investigate whether existing cancer has spread. A very important job of the immune system is creating lymphocytes, some of which make antibodies, which are proteins that destroy germs and stop infection or mutated cells from spreading. Damn. So, I mean, this, this system is incredible. In some instances, this process doesn't work quickly enough to fight free radical damage and stop cancer from spreading. Our malfunctions and mutated cells can start to multiply very quickly and spread. Cancer can either start within a lymph node called lymphoma or it can spread there for somewhere, um, from somewhere else. Cancer cells that have broken away from a tumor can travel to other areas of the body through the blood or lymph fluid where they reach other organs and continue to multiply. Most of the time the body takes care of this process and is able to destroy small amounts of mutated cells or escape cancer cells before they start spreading. But it only takes a small amount of mutated cancer cells to make their way to another part of the body before they can form new tumors called um, metastasis. Me metastasis. This can become painful and also very quickly if lymph nodes become enlarged. Sometimes they are big and tender enough to fill with your fingers by pushing in your skin. Cancer found in lymph nodes affects how the cancer is treated and what cancer stage someone is at. A surgeon might remove a lymph node if it becomes infected with cancer cells called a biopsy. Or if it's too late because the cancer has spread, other treatments like chemo or radiation might be needed. Alright, now I'm going to get all out of that. One of the problems with removing lymph nodes to remove cancer cells is that this leaves the body without a way to balance fluids or remove tissue waste, which can cause tissue to become swollen and painful called lymphedema. 
Many doctors use TNM systems to classify cancer stages. We're going to move out of that. How? This is where I wanted to get. So we know the lymphatic system helps fight disease. We know if the lymphatic system start um, working incorrectly, it could develop all types. Of, it, could, it could develop cancers. You know what I'm saying? It helps fight all these things. Now, how do we maintain a strong lymphatic system? Ignoring the health of your lymphatic system means your immunity is going to suffer. And many of us do this by not moving. And you're more likely to deal with common illness and even long-term health problems. <clears throat> Here are five ways to boost your immune system and more of a support a healthy lymphatic system. Reduce inflammation and improve circulation. Eating a healthy diet, of course, not smoking, getting enough sleep, and reducing stress are critical for lowering oxidative stress and halting the body's natural detoxification process. The circulatory system and lymphatic system rely on one another. I like how this stuff works, right? So, um, I'm reading in Living Superfood and Longevity by Brother Keating. He talked about um, oxidative damage. Now, like I said, the stuff I'm doing, family, we got to do. Because many of our families... Many people in our family and many of us are suffering, so we got to start doing our research. Now, this is what I'm noticing, right? Getting to self-determination, right? That, 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 that ability to define ourselves for ourselves, that determination to move through. And one of the things I'm noticing with, with the young people is that they are not determined to get this information because they don't view it as important. Part of self-determination is being able to make something important enough that you will have that drive, right? A lot of young people don't have a drive because they, it hasn't been made important to them, right? As we start getting older and we start approaching and death, like, for example, I know I got, it's a possibility I got more time behind me than I got in front of me, so I don't mind getting this information. Our children act as if, as if. They have to find their reality as if they have forever. And we have to start encouraging our kids and being honest with them. You don't have forever, right? You, you have plenty of time, but you don't have forever. So you need to start taking some things a little bit serious. And I'm not talking about the type of seriousness where they don't smile and they're super serious, you know, because we run into those type of people. And those people are unhealthy. They're not, their lymphatic system is not working. But I'm noticing that I'm able to get this information now, read this information now, have patience with this information now in a way that I wasn't able to do when I was young because it's serious to me. I have people in my family and you have people in your family that are suffering from this. So now we got to start doing the work, right? We might not be certified doctors, but we can help and assist those around us we can help ourselves and we could be an example so that other people be like yo what are you doing differently right well why why me and you the same age and you get up and you can run three miles or you getting up at three o'clock in the morning talking to people on a damn video or listening to somebody talk on a damn video how can you do this and still be able to work and still be able to set up your own business and still be able to help people you know what I'm saying? Why do you always have energy? Right? What, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm taking this shit seriously. And we got to get our kids to start taking stuff seriously. All right. So, I went and got Brother Kitty's book. And I know I'm over 30 minutes. So, all right. In here, they just mentioned um, uh, oxidative stress. Eating a healthy diet. Exercising, not smoking, getting enough sleep, and reducing stress are critical for lowering oxidative stress and halting the body's natural detoxif detoxification process. So he mentioned an oxidative stress. And it says, this is the resulting imbalance between the impact of a ROS, which is a reactive oxygen species system, within the biological environment and residual toxic intermediates which must be cleared in order to prevent long-term damage from reactive molecule to cell components, proteins, lipids, fatty acids, and DNA. 
Left unchecked, the presence of OS, which is oxidative stress, has been linked to a broad spectrum of A-related degenerative diseases, including cancer, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, sickle cell disease, chronic infections, cardiovascular disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, and many other disorder, um, disorders associated with aging. Right? So, an oxidative stress, right? Oxidative stress is a stress that is brought on by um, the, this is a result imbalance between the impact of a reactive oxygen species. Let's look at that. This is a broad definition that covers a number of biochemical processes involving cellular energy formation and immune system functions, generating the killing response to microbial invasions. Reactive oxygen species include a number of formations involving unpaired electrons, which result in unstable and highly reactive molecules, and also including superoxidized hydrogen peroxide, hydro uh, radical and nitric oxide and more. We spoke about the nitric oxide. The nitric oxide is the element that's released to help purify the air that we breathe. So reactive oxygen species are species in the sense, at least that I'm getting. Now I hope somebody out there who knows what this, that knows this stuff a little bit more intimately. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Put it down in the, in, in, um, in, in the comments below. But a reactive oxy oxygen species are the elements within our body that help fight disease, right? So an oxidative, uh, oxidative, uh, oxidative stress, this is the resultant imbalance between the impact of RS system within a biological environment and residual toxic intermediates which must be cleared in order to prevent long-term damage from reactive molecules to, to, uh, to cell components, proteins, lipid, fatty acids, and DNA. So, when they're talking about um, oxidative stress and hauling bodies, eating a healthy diet, exercising, not smoking, smoking, getting enough sleep, and reducing stress are critical for lowering oxidative stress. So, the stress that comes from your body clearing itself out, that's what it sounds like to me, and hearting the body's natural detoxification process. The circulatory system and lymphatic system rely on one another, right, to help clear all this shit out. Basically, in unscientific terms, to help clear all this shit out, the lymphatic system and the, and the blood circulatory system rely on each other. While blood circulates around the body via blood vessels, some fluid naturally leaks out and makes its way into tissue. This is a normal process that brings nutrients, water, and proteins to cell. The fluid also gathers cell waste products like bacteria or even dead or damaged cells like cancer cells. Now, when when your body is not working right, it does clean itself out. So what they're talking about is this this circulation, of course, moves the blood, right, and brings the oxygen to the body. But right, the that oxygen is also not only helping you breathe, but it's also helping kill some of this shit in your body. These cancer cells, because they we know oxygen kills it, right. So this this oxidative of stress is after the after they go through and kill it, what happens to it? Or after after the battles, what happens? Is your body able to clean it? Now, tissues located around the body can become inflamed and painful when circulation slows and inflammation builds. A healthy lymphatic system nourishes muscles, joints, and other tissues because lymph vessels have tiny openings that let gases, water, and nutrients pass through to surrounding cells called interstitial fluid. The fluid then drains back into the lymph vessel, then goes to the lymph glands to be filtered and to finally and finally to a larger lymphatic vessel located at the base of the neck called the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct dumps clean lymph fluid back into the blood and on and on the cycle goes, and on and on the cycle goes, which is why circulation is important for keeping the system running smoothly. Otherwise, tissue can become swollen with excessive weights to keep circulation pumping 
and the lymphatic system functioning optimally is important to load up on all the essential nutrients like vitamins, minerals, electrolytes, and antioxidants you need. So this helps keep the whole process going. You know what I'm saying? It helps clean the system out, right? So, uh, uh, so the stress that comes, the stress that comes is when your body is not able to move that stuff up and out. Follow an anti-inflammatory diet. The more nutrient this your diet, and the less chemicals entering your body. The more nutrient dense your diet, and the less chemicals entering your body. Right? Processed food. Put them chips down. Processed food. Right? You know, eat the chips if you want. That's, that's your life. Right? The better your lymphatic system can work. I'm still struggling with it too, y'all. Food that puts stress on the digestive, digestive, circulatory, and immune system include allergens like dairy products, gluten, soy, selfish, um, or nightshades, for example. Low quality animal products, refined vegetable oils, and processed foods that contain chemical toxins. What? God damn it. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm still experimenting with the oil, right? Anti inflammatory foods, on the other hand, supply much needed nutrients and antioxidants while also lowering free radical damage also called oxidation stress right we just talked about the oxidation stress all right so let's look at that again on the other hand so um, anti-inflammatory foods on the other hand supply much needed nutrients and antioxidants while also lowering free radical damage also called oxidation stress so free, the free radical damage when people talk about free radicals right when we got just a um, random cells just running through right causing damage that's oxidation stress right the lymphatic system help get rid of that that ages the body and lowers immunity some of the key high anti antioxidant food to focus on include I'm at 40 minutes I'm gonna stop green leafy vegetables um, crucifer vessel veggies broccoli cabbage cauliflower berries Omega-3 foods like salmon and wild seafood. Omega-3s are important to get into your diet. Nuts and seeds, chia, flax, hemp, pumpkin, etc. We're gonna do some we're gonna do some shows on those. Unrefined oils like woo. Unrefined oils like extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil. <sighs> Palm oil. You know, I heard some bad things about palm oil too, but we hear everything. Herbs and spices, ginger, turmeric, garlic, for example. All right, anti-inflammatory diet. Now I pull this out. Inflammation. In preparing notes for these brief explanations, the critical components. Once again, going back to living superfood longevity. It's incredible how the ancestors line stuff up, family. In preparing notes for these brief explanations of critical components of our cellular system, which are central to oxygen utilization and energy creation. Remember, we breathe in the oxygen. That's why we focus on the breath family. You can eat what you want to eat, but if you're not breathing right, right? If you're not breathing right, you are hurting yourself more than you are building yourself up. So go on, eat right, but continue breathing through your mouth and watch what happens, right? You know what I'm saying? Breathe right and you will go a long way to keep yourself healthy. Oxygen utilization and energy creation because the oxygen helped the body, right, create the energy. <clears throat> the, best, the special significance of inflammation cannot be overappreciated. Yet connecting the relationship of inflammation to aging could itself become a topic of very extens of a very extensive body, a volume. A book on upon itself, information role and aging encompasses a number of subtopics, including the central question of cause and effect or both. Redox stress, mitochondrial functionality, immune immune innocence, immune system aging, as well as endocrine and in, in, endocrino sense, endocrine, um, endocrine system aging and a cascade of other other critical metabolic functions 
As this larger publication continues to unfold, we'll examine as many of these different aspects of the inflammation aging connection as can be compressed into this particular volume. To say the least, a comprehensive understanding and optimized management of the many inflammatory, inflammatory process presents as the greatest area of active management where our efforts will be rewarded with high quality life extension so by learning to control the inflammation right now how do we do that see because because i want to stress this man because it's not just a diet i mean diet is important don't get me wrong breathing is important but how do we get these lymphatic fluids moving right so um they got pictures on here all right so any type, listen, and I'm almost done, any type of regular exercise and movement, such as simply walking more, is good for keeping lymph fluid flowing. We got to listen. It don't have its own circulatory system. It depends on you to get it flowing, right? But some exercise seem to be particularly beneficial, including yoga, which, which twists the body and helps fluid drain. Now, What's the first exercise I sent you on the Guzzi Saba Challenge? I sent you what's called, what we call the Giami Salutation. Where we're just moving. We're twisting the body. We're moving upside down. We're putting our, bottom, our head down below our heart. You know what I'm saying? Standing on your head for a couple of, for a couple of seconds every now and then every day. Stretching the body. Um, which twist the body health fluid drain. High intensity interval training. Also called HIIT workouts, which is great for improving circulation or rebounding. Now, I'm training the boys, well, I'm training the young warriors on, on in a HIIT process, right? 30 seconds of, 30 seconds of push-ups, 30 seconds of squats, 30 seconds of um, warrior push-ups, right? Boom. HIIT is high-intensity training. Right? We'll get in, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Re rebounding is growing in popularity and involves and involves jumping a small uh, jumping on a small trampoline that you can keep inside your house. It only takes a, up a few feet and just five to ten minutes of jumping daily can really get your heart rate up and help keep you your lymphatic system running. And if you don't have a trump tr um a, uh, a trampoline, then you can act like you're boxing and just bounce up and down. Or how about dancing, family? How about dancing, right? I, we got to get this fluid movement, and why not follow up exercise with a relaxing detox bath to further help improve blood circulation? Now, we're going to talk about that when I get into talking about the importance of cold showers as well. Well, they call it hydrotherapy, where you're taking warm and cold showers, because when you take warm showers, it allows the, the blood vessels to expand. And it forces more blood through, right? But then when you switch it to cold showers, it constricts it, which makes it makes the blood have to push harder, make your heart make your heart move a little bit more. But I'm I'm gonna stop. Massage therapy and rolling foam, infrared, infrared, infrared sauna treatment. All right, now they got those, but that's about two thousand dollars. But they have some places with it. Use supplements that support your lymphatic system. Certain essential oils can be beneficial for improving blood flow and reducing swelling lymph nodes. These include lemon, myrrh, oregano, cypress, and frankincense oils. Omega-3 fish oils and turmeric are also beneficial for improving blood flow and lowering inflammation. Supplements that can further help lymphatic drainage and detox space include burdock root. I told you. Burdock root, digestive milk thistle. All right, y'all got it. All right, cool. So we'll start with the lymphatic system today. I know that was a lot of information. Go back, read it, practice, study it yourself, family. You know what I'm saying? And get to moving. Get your lymphatic system working, please, please. Let's do this, right? Let's build. So I'm about to take my supplements. I still got to clean up the kitchen. I'm running behind, but I felt this information was important enough to make sure you got. All right, so I'm out. Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there, the fiery bird. And 
I also have a special video just for you. Right there. And for those that want more information about Jeremy Journey, go to our site. It should be right about there.